What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So I'm glad to finally bring you a full breakdown and my total thoughts on the newest release from Zaharoff called Signature Halfetti Black Rose. This is the 4 ounce bottle. We will be covering the look of the 2 ounce bottle as well in this video. So I got a lot of thoughts to share on this one. So stay tuned. So as per usual, before we get started, I have a very specific disclaimer because George Zaharoff is a very dear friend of mine, so obviously there's some natural bias here. But at the same time, I'm also one of the few that are privileged to be part of the testing process, so I've had a lot of time through all the modifications and variations that this scent profile has gone through over the last few years of its creation to where I feel like I've one of the better options to maybe break it down for you and explain what you might be able to expect at least what i've experienced on this fragrance so obviously take my thoughts with a grain of salt like i said because of the natural bias but the day actually the day this video goes live samples will be available on the site for five bucks so try it for yourself if you're interested don't just take my word for it and see if it's for you before you jump on a bottle so let's take a look at this presentation so we'll take a quick look at the two ounce bottle. So the two ounce bottle really shows that natural color juice, how dark and rich it is. It almost looks like grape juice because that it looks like the black rose just bled all into some water basically is what it looks like. See how it says printed in silver, signature black rose from Halfetti. And on the back side, it's frosted in black with that same black rose and thorn bush, you know, thorny bushy looking deal going around the rose that you can actually see through especially in natural lighting where it's it's dark in here and I just have typical lighting set up. And then the cap is actually hand painted. It was originally painted red. As you can see the red, actually I'll take the cap off to show you guys. That'll be a little bit easier. So you can see initially it's painted red underneath and then it's painted black on top. So it actually looks almost like an airbrush kind of deal going on with the cap. And then of course there's the there's a Horoff Z on the inside, which I don't know if I'll be able to really capture in the light, but this is the two ounce bottle, as stated before. So the Coup de Gras is definitely the four ounce bottle. We'll get that to focus here in just a second because uh, definitely a work of art. This is all hand painted, airbrushed, detailed. You can even see there's a little bit of imperfections uh, right here. See the paint's off a little bit. It's all done by hand, embossed, debossed. A lot of detail going into this very thick metal plate as you can see adds a lot of weight to this bottle and you can see that same cap has that kind of like a burnt tone to it and that natural juice color as well and then with his standard atomizers that put out and do their job let's get a little spritz action from when we dive into the scent profile but first let's take a look at the boxes real quick so this is the two ounce box they are the exact same box just different sizes so you have that black rose design with the thorns and everything Z in the middle very dark hue to it almost like a deep purple hue the way this burgundy comes across and then the thorns go all the way around there you see elixir of the world Zahar off continues going around Z on the top other information on the bottom and then when you open the box on the inside you have that same red metallic and then real quickly we'll touch on the four ounces the same exact box just in a four ounce 120 milliliter size but enough of the presentation let's talk about the scent profile so when you first spray Halfetti Black Rose this is a very rich I'll have the notes on the screen for you guys this is a very rich warm resinous spicy 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 smoky woody rose um, this Sri Lankan black pepper is the star of the show I'm sure the basil is helping with some of this spice but a very 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 dense warm and spicy smoky kind of warm woody smell because the oud the Chinese oud that's used here is the same Chinese oud oil Claude Deer has used across pretty much all of the signature line flankers that have had the oud oil in them it's been the same oud oil so any of you familiar with the way that particular wood oil smells, that agarwood, 
that's been used. It's kind of more of a warm wood smell. It doesn't really have any of that typical oud funk. Not really the pencil shaving type. It's not medicinal. It just has that warm wood, slightly dry feel to it. Uh, and that's prevalent here with the spice, the black rose, really with the olibanum tears, which is just this resinous frankincense, basically. Adds a very dark, smoky edge to this fragrance. There's Tonka listed, but could fool me. I never smell any sweetness at any given stage. This is not a sweet fragrance, which brings me into a point I wanted to make real quick. I have Signature Rosé right here. So any of you that were curious on if there's redundancy between these two, wildly different rose fragrances. I never really thought of this as a more playful, relaxing, laid-back scent until I got around to smelling this because this is much more assertive, masculine, uh, a very forward fragrance, if you will. It um, makes quite the aggressive statement in many ways. It's a very strong fragrance, whereas this is still a strong fragrance, but it's more laid-back and playful because of that sweetness. There's sugar cane, there's vanilla bean that are clear as day in here. While still being a, a rose incense, you have different types of rose as well as incense, a labdanum that comes across as a rock rose with the Turkish rose as well as that Halfetti black rose. Um, kind of different here. You've got some different rose action going on from Signature Rosé to this and this kind of stands on its own um, as a much more like ambery, dark and warm, spiced rose. The addition to the woody notes is this vetiver. So I don't really get any, like there's a dark tone to it, but it doesn't really come across super earthy to me, but there is a little bit of that dirty element to it. Uh, there's, cause there's vetiver and cypriol oil here. And I, I don't know if it's one, the other, or both, both typically have that characteristic of giving an earthy tone. And I think they kind of work together to add this dirtiness if you will and I don't mean that in a bad way um, with more of a woody nuance which I'm sure the vetiver is contributing with the oud uh, this amber accord cashmere wood things like that really stand out it all just kind of blends together to make this warm woody resinous spicy smell across the board with a rose that's never too rosy if you will it doesn't smell like your grandma's favorite rose perfume it doesn't smell like your mom's favorite rose perfume this is very distinctive. This fragrance is not going to be for everyone. I have to make sure to let you guys know. This is not something that I personally want to wear every day. It's too much of a statement maker for just a casual day, just grab and go kind of fragrance. This, you kind of plan for this. Because people, it's a very strong fragrance. Uh, my nose does go blind to this when it does wear out, which we'll discuss in performance in a little bit in the next section. But as far as the scent profile... This one is kind of one of those cherry on top fragrances for when you're going somewhere and you're dressing to impress, maybe you're going out to dinner, not a first date either. This is maybe a little too aggressive for a first date fragrance. Um, that's more an established relationship, I would say, going on this kind of, with this for your fragrance for a date or evening out or dinner or something like that. But anything that you treat as something of significance to you with a level of importance more so than just something casual or typical work day i think that's where this is going to be better suited not a not a great warm weather fragrance but there are worse options out there i mean hell signature rosé i wouldn't say is an ideal summer fragrance but i wear this every summer at some point since it came out a few years ago i'll i've worn this through testing before the you know the final uh, production batches were macerated and the bottles were poured this past summer and the previous summer with previous renditions. It does fine, just know that it is very warm on the heavy side and spicy, but if you're looking for that resinous, dark, uber-masculine floral fragrance, you might have found this. I would strongly urge you, urge you to sample this fragrance. Um, just for perspective, this is still my favorite Zaharoff release. I take the Zed Creators out of it any version, you know, first or second round, and just look at the house releases and the signature line. This is just really special to me. Nothing will really knock it off its perch. But what did happen was Leather to Back, which is such a wow factor, impressive statement maker in its own right, has been bumped to my third favorite because this moved into the number two spot or the 1B to this one being 1A, if you will. Uh, go figure, both rose fragrances are my absolute favorites from Zaharoff. Now let's talk about performance. So this is where it gets tricky. It's an eau de parfum. I believe it's a 20%, if I remember correctly, because um, it's not listed on the card. I want to say the lab samples were either 18% or 20% for the final rendition. It's either 18 or 20%. I apologize that I don't remember exactly, but it's one of the two, but trust me, 
Performance is not an issue here. Longevity is until you wash it off your skin. Take that as you will. Call it 12 plus. It stays. It's it's kind of like the glue I've always called rosé, where when it, it'll calm down. But the thing is, you're going to think now if you're anything like me. This George has had this experience as well. Uh, pretty much every time he wears it, also. You're gonna wear out to this fragrance. You will. It's it's very powerful. When you first spray it, it's it's potent stuff. It's really really strong sillage, hefty. You can overwhelm yourself with this one if you spray. If you're the heavy spray type, you're probably gonna overwhelm yourself early on. Maybe you've just you're the heavy spray type, so you've worn your sensitivity down so much to where it doesn't bother you all that much. Like you might do 10 to 15 sprays on strong fragrances all the time. It might not come across as strong to you then because you've already wrecked your nose. <laughs> if you do that on a regular basis, you've wrecked your nose already. So your sensitivity is maybe not at the same point as where mine is. My nose is pretty sensitive for the most part. So I, you know, I tend to wear down a little quicker on these really, really strong, potent fragrances. And that's the case here. So I would say a safe bet is 10 to 12 hours, but you can really call it 12 plus hours. Um, it will stay on skin. Projection, like I was stating a moment ago, really, really heavy early on. I never do more than four sprays with this one. I could really get away with less. Uh, kind of like with leather tobacco, I typically do three sprays. I could do three sprays with this, but I just had gotten the habit of doing corner neck, back of, you know, side neck, corner back, side neck, corner back. And when I say corner back, corner side to the back of my neck, not directly in the back. So I kind of do two like this on each side is how I spray and uh, and I go anosmic to it after I would say about an hour it starts to calm down a lot and then it really comes back to life a few hours later when it actually calms down uh, and then it's a really stout moderate sillage that's constantly reminding me that it's there um, I've had my wife let me know many 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 hours into the day we're talking 9 10 11 hours I've had it happen at 15 at the 15 hour mark when we were out of town whereas like did you refresh did you spray it again? No, same sprays. Um, so everybody's going to have a different experience with skin chemistry, olfactive fatigue, and perception. You know, everybody's situation is going to be different. But for me, this is an absolute beast. Um, and I do go nose blind to it. So keep that in mind. And uh, maybe if you're looking to clock it and do your own testing, maybe ask others. It, you know, when you're wearing it, you know, eight hours later, hey, do you, do you happen to smell what I'm wearing? If you're curious, just saying. Um, but for me across the board, it's, I'm going to be modest here and say 10 to 12 hours in longevity. Uh, projection, very heavy side for uh, two hours easily until like by then it's gotten weaker to me because my nose has worn out so much from it. It, it overwhelms me, uh, overwhelms my wife quite a bit as well. And then the CIs that's left for the remainder moderate stuff you're going to get nice whiffs of it once at least for me once my sensitivity level uh comes back like it, it subsides a bit to where um i can smell myself a lot easier again because it never goes away to where i just don't get any whiffs throughout it just becomes lighter because my nose is, is kind of desensitizing to the aroma uh, so across the board some powerful stuff so final thoughts on black rose signature how fetty black rose i would say if you like rose, if you like signature rosé, must try. It makes it a must try for you. Uh, I know tons of people have pre-ordered and they'll be getting, the day this video goes out, your pre-orders are going out. But for the rest of you, I would say get a sample and try it if it interests you. There's a link down below with 10% off code. Um, check it out. See if it works for you. If you're interested, you can always catch a bottle. If not, you'll know if it was for you or not by sampling. That's why I always encourage sample, sample, sample. The pre-sale is for those that know they're gonna support the brand, they know they really enjoy what George puts out, so that's an opportunity for them to just get it as you know loyal supporters of the brand to get it at a really, you know, the cheapest price they'll be able to get it for. And then moving forward, those that wanna try before you buy, which I always strongly encourage you sample first, that option is available to you. Um, so that's pretty much what it is. As you guys know, I don't give any grades or ratings to the Zahara fragrances. They're all going to be highly rated for me. There's that natural bias that I mentioned in the disclaimer at the beginning of the video. Um, so that pretty much covers it. It's a very strong fragrance. It's very masculine. I don't think it's the best choice for the hot weather, but formal occasions, semi-casual, uh, evenings out, cooler weather, or when you just really want to show out on somebody, and make a real strong statement, a fragrance that's really impressive. It's really impressive and unique. That's what this is for. This is for that person. 
It's not for everybody. Not everybody's gonna enjoy this fragrance the way I do. It can be polarizing because it is so potent and so different. It is a masculine, super spicy and warm black rose fragrance of all things with a lot of smoky notes, warm woods, and a bit of a dirty earthy tone to it. It's impressive. It's definitely for the fragrance enthusiast in your life, not just the casual Dillard's and Macy's shopper that buys a lot of blue fragrances and stuff like that. This might be a little bit of a challenge for them, but the rest of you that treat this as a hobby or collect or call, consider yourself an enthusiast, I think you'll probably have a really good appreciation for this fragrance. And until next time, do me a real quick favor. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe because I do appreciate all the feedback. And I love hearing from you guys. How many got your pre-order in? How many of you are excited to get your bottle, whether it's the two ounce or the four ounce? How many of you were just looking to get a sample and try it first? I'd love to know what you think after you try it. Look, like I said, I expect some people to not like it. I expect a ton of people to love it, though. That I definitely do because this is some of Claude Deere's best work to date. Um, just for perspective, I like this release more than Orem. I mean, literally, I wore Orem yesterday at the recording of this video. Love Orem. I like this more than Coco Loco. That was one of my favorite releases of 2023. I love this. This is my favorite in-house release since this and until next time i will say if you get your hands on signature alfetti black rose and you give it a spray now pretty confident you'll thank me later have a good one guys mm -hmm.